Hello YouTube and welcome back to Groundworks and we are playing KSP again and in the previous episode we have successfully rescued people from the moon or basically Jeb and Bob and that means that we have 682 science to spend which we will be spending on various points of research starting with and yes I'm dragging till I find a suitable answer um, Composites, actuators, well, that part doesn't concern me. Heavy aerodynamics, I'd love to. Hypersonic flight, oh, that's something that I'm really interested in, but I think it's a little bit too early. Because first I won't need to have a reason to go to have SSTO, so heavy landing, that's possible. Specialized control, that might be useful. Command modules, definitely needed for the bigger command pods. Lander cans, etc. So command modules might be a candidate. What else can we do then? Precision engineering, that's for some additional panels. Advanced electrics, electronics, I already have those. So I have a big relay antenna. All right. Hmm. Precision engineering. Well, that's for the probes and stuff. So that might not be a, such a bad idea. And I have, that gives us a communitron DTSM-1. Yeah, that one could be handy to have. Alright, so what else do we have? I'm just looking at the ranges. This is 61 gigameters. So that's, and that's a relay antenna. Scanning tech. Oh, that's good. That could give us some scanning technology. Infrared telescope. Surface scanning module, additional experience, um, survey scanner, yes, please, that's an orbital surveyor. And atmospheric, atmosphere analysis. That might be actually useful to run. And there's our ex additional experiments, so I don't know. Sounds like something that might be interesting to, to have. Let's research that one, and we have 382 for some additional. So what can we do? Heavy aerodynamics, large volume containment, probably not. Specialized construction, what do you have here? Bigger fairings, yes, that's absolutely a must. And that gives us 200, so not enough for the composites. Precision engineering, perhaps, or Specialized control, two and a half meter wheels. Yeah, yeah, I'm that's reaction wheels. I think I'm gonna go with the reaction wheels. Good, lead facility. And that means that we'll probably have to research also. Yeah, okay. Okay, that's way more time in the research tree than I would originally like, but okay, let us continue with the vehicle assembly building. Right, I want to be building an interplanetary probe. That this time will be going to Duna, hopefully. And I just want to gather some additional science experiments, so let's see if we can manage, oh, this is for this should be in orbit. Okay, surface scanning module. Yes. You know that this is my regular science collector body, so... Oh, that's a bit too big. Survey scanner. Uh, atmospheric, fluid, spectral, whatever. Let's place you here. Good. Let's launch the craft. Our little science gatherer. Alright, so let's see what we can get from the science. Run the analysis. Shores or 
some surface analysis okay fair enough run atmosphere analysis and we get six more signs well that's not too bad I guess Jeb recover the vessel we will be doing a lot more experiments on different planets so I'm not overly worried but yeah six signs not bad Jeb is ready for the next assignment except in this case we will be definitely going for something else so focus on Kerbin and I'm thinking that the target for today should be Duna and let's just see are we in a favorable alignment sort of maybe not the best best but should be decent enough should be doable right let's now build the probe that will be getting us and some science from Duna and as always I'm doing this at two times the time acceleration so a big relay antenna on top should I be putting rather this one the communitron okay maybe 61 gigameters yeah let's put some power here there we go I need basically a body where I can attach antenna too then I need some fuel tanks yes then I need an engine capable of running this 202 and that would be in the air right so let's put a bigger tank now something like that how does that feel Delta V in vacuum 1433 that's more like it there we go so I should put maybe the materials bay or just put the other science experiments science capsule yes survey scanner shall I put it on top hmm maybe we should be focusing on other stuff processing lab I don't think so we place this guy although it technically it won't be landing anywhere so the thermometer yes atmosphere analyzer maybe not goo both sides yes please then what I'm looking for is the barometer where are you barometer barometer atmospheric fluid spectrovariometer but you're not gonna be in the atmosphere hmm okay I'm blind oh there you are okay that's barometer thank you now we need then communication devices solar panels and communication devices solar panels that only extend once thank you communication antennas you shall be going upwards for the launch control thank you then I need a communitron for basic orbital communication and then the big one somewhere foldable antenna hmm do I really need that that's a direct antenna for the 60 gigameters well that's hopefully good enough and we put this on the other side what that looks good enough and the scanner on top of everything nah still doesn't look good that's too big all right probe interplanetary probe mark 2 destined towards other planets yes I'm thinking of sending it to Duna and maybe even to Eve I'm not sure so communitron yes communitron extend the antenna solar panel let's then toggle the antenna and then collect all experiments and then send them somehow eventually all right 
That's uh, and it's a decent thrust away. 1341. Good enough. Now, let's see what can we do here. Reaction controls. Yes, please. We need those obviously. Sure. Then what do we do? Uh, let's see. I need a how do you say ejection stage sort of I mean it will be covered ultimately by the interplanetary pro mark 2 section but it would be handy to have a decoupler that would do additional stuff shroud disabled yes I don't want shroud I just want to have a payload protected inside 2.5 meters have it straight up 185 that might be actually handy oh no the antenna won't stand for it okay we throw it away then 2.5 meters straight out of the box there we go look at it it just fits perfectly okay clamshell deploy okay now we need to be designing how much the fuel will have in this engine. Oh, that's too small. I need a 2.5 meter tank. Yeah, this one. There we go. Looks about right. An additional one. Perfect. Let's put the main sail at the bottom. That would give us a 3,000, oh yeah, the reaction wheels, we definitely need that one. So, then we want to have, that's 4220, that's good, but not good enough. Now, I want to have the additional fuel tanks, maybe we could put these guys here. Hopefully it will be fine. So just two or more. So how does that look? Hmm. Could we put more? Or yeah, that's the stuff. Bigger ones, we just place it downwards. And then we have the interplanetary probe mark two. Let's put a storage tank above. There we go. So now, the real question is, should we put two or should we put four? Something like that. And then the fins. Yes, we will place four fins. Or actually two fins like that. Additional two fins like that. That should give us enough control, hopefully. Additional, you know, these trusses. And they should be firing together after the engines. I have a good feeling about this craft. Let's launch it. Okay, throttle to max. Three, two, one, go! We have liftoff. Our thrust to weight is a little bit high, so let's reduce the thrust a little bit and start angling. Overall, our trajectory looks quite good. We are already supersonic. Our apoapsis is at 30 or 40. Good. And as always, guys, you're watching this accelerated. Oh, we're a little bit too fast, too low, but okay. Oops. Okay, that got me worried for a second. And our epoapsis is already at 100. Huh, go figure. Add the maneuver node. Let's circularize.
and when we get to the above the atmosphere I'm gonna pop the fairing obviously so getting ready for the burn which should be in roughly soon enough okay pop the fairing extending the solar panels I will burn around the one minute mark and we have more than enough Delta V we have 4,000 meters per second and we need 1.4 so we will have 2.4 2.6 more once we circularize and that should hopefully get us an ejection to do in a, in a good way Six hundred meters per second to burn. Hundred meters per second to burn. All right, three point five meters per second remaining. Good. Now we are in the orbit. Okay, so how do we approach this? Let's. Set Duna as target, add the maneuver, there we go, so let's now see how we can we get a decent Duna intercept. And this is the place where I usually fiddle with the orbits or the positioning till I get some something resembling an intercept. By the way, these new tools are kind of cool because they allow me to play a little bit with the alignment, but let's see, do it traditionally, old fashioned style. All right, 1042. Now let's just check let's just check the whole purpose is to get roughly the burn that will eject us somewhere around duna so not exactly 100 percent on par but uh, somewhere around that area this is very different from the hoffman transfers that you have all known and loved that I did in previous episodes. Then I had a transfer planner to knowing exact when to plan, what to burn, etc. This is more like the traditional, just go up to the orbit and then circularize until you get the encounter. And this one has a very high thrust to weight, so the burns aren't too long, which is good. bit more burning in the right direction at least okay 0 0.2 I think that should give us close enough approach hopefully it did reject us on those way to do now ascending no 0 0.1 that won't do a too big of a difference and let's watch as we leave the Kerbin's sphere of influence Always a beautiful sight, especially for our interplanetary probes. I'm just trying to find a good angle to show it. So let's see. Okay, it's a little bit in the shade. Ultimately should be fine. Extend the antenna. Yes, please. Oh, and it clips a little bit. Well, that wasn't planned, but okay. 
So finding a good angle and let's accelerate till we lose the Kerbin's SOI. Bye Kerbin. We shall be seeing you, well, never in this craft actually. It's not designed for return and landing, so. This one will go to Duna and ultimately gather science, the scientific data and stick around Duna for a long while to come. Maybe visit Ike. Maybe. Beautiful, and look at the moon over there. And the Minmus, a tiny speck that also dances in the background of the Kerbin. Alright, so I think that leaves us into the interplanetary space. So now we have to think about our approach to Duna. And with that thing being said, let's just kick the time acceleration and continue onwards on our merry way to Duna. So, as we approach the apoapsis, I'm going to actually put the maneuver note on the apoapsis and hopefully try to found, find an encounter where we actually have um, an encounter with Duna, hopefully. So, let's just see how would we be able to get a Duna encounter. Maybe I should flip that an orbit forward. Oh, that's a Kerbin encounter. I don't want that. So, how about, nope, maybe a little bit before, maybe a little bit after. Okay, tell you what, I'm going to fiddle with it until I find a decent enough encounter with Duna. Oh, and here we have an encounter. Wonderful. So the node is supposed to happen in one year, 171 days. So we'll just skip until we get there. But first we will be aligning ourselves with the actual maneuver node's location or direction. And in one year and 171 days, we will be burning. You see, I believe uh, one of my viewers and loyal ones to the like Baruch pointed out there's really no point in time why, until we get um, the life, tech life support. And I fully agree here because now if I had a tech life support, then this uh, two years, I could be doing a lot more and uh, also we would have to pay attention if we had any Kerbals that are off-world. But um, in this case time doesn't matter too much. So. so the burn is happening in some 10 seconds. And kick it. The good thing is that I still have the high thrust to wait from the initial stage, which will help, help a lot with this fiddling, meaning all the burns are shorter. 27 meters per second to burn, and as soon as I fix that one, we should have an encounter, hopefully. 1.6, come on, a little bit more, 0.8. 0 0.3 and yeah apparently we have a Duna periapsis which is good so I'm gonna actually warp until the Duna encounter which is in one year and 230 days okay and uh, we are approaching Duna in roughly a couple of days we're gonna have an approach beside Duna so let's see if we can take down the Duna periapsis 
So do we pass really close to Duna? Fiddling with the maneuver node to secure us a good enough approach. By good enough, I mean around 100 kilometers, not 1,000 kilometers. 600 kilometers, 400 kilometers. Yeah, 160. Now we're talking. Okay, and that's 109.7 meters per second burn happening in one day. Should be easy peasy. And we have total of 464 meters per second, so I'm going to thrust limit it a little bit to ensure that our burn time is a little bit longer and thus, thus more predictable. Okay, so the burn is in 10 minutes, and then we will be securing our close approach to Duna. This is the, will be the first time that we're taking a look at the red planet, and I cannot wait to see it up close, even through the eyes of the probe. Alright, burning, 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 and making sure that we secure a good approach. Okie doke. Right. So apparently we have a good enough approach. Now let's find out where Duna is in the night sky and enjoy the show. Okay, it should be pointing somewhere towards the sun. If I'm seeing it right. The problem is when you're looking at the sun, it darkens the sky, so you don't see it per se. Hmm. Maybe if we kick in the time acceleration a little bit, it will show its face. Oh, there she is. There's Duna. Just to the right and above the sun. Beautiful. Okay, let's engage the time acceleration and enjoy as it draws ever closer. There we go. Oh, and there's Ike. Duna is actually my favorite planet in KSP and I love the way it looks. It looks just darn amazing. Oh, and apparently we should be fixing our approach. Otherwise, we're going to come from the bottom and this is not going to turn out very well. I want to be performing the insertion so that we uh, land in equatorial orbit, more or less. So, 160, yes, but maybe a little bit straightened out, like something like that. And then a little bit out, just a pinch, so that we are around 100 kilometers. I know that Duna has much lower atmosphere, I think it's around 60 or something, but still, 100 kilometers orbit is a nice one. Nice round number. 59.7 meters per second to burn, and I think we'll do it just fine. Alright, let's get in there. We'll be arriving there in 4 hours, 36 minutes and 3 seconds, So, but we have to do the maneuver node first, which is in 5 seconds, so let's just kick it to correct our approach, and wonderful, that's close enough. I'm happy with that one. 98 kilometers, beautiful. 296 meters per second. I mean, 
you're messing up with my view so let's do the science experiments shall we we control from here yes observe the mystery goo okay before i do that i'm actually thinking of staging just to get a nicer look let's do a screenshot and yes stage so the probe actually gets to be the probe so observe the mystery goo the goo feels right at home here thank you transmit the data what else do we have thermometer log temperature 40 science decent don't mind if i do what else do we have barometer log pressure data send good atmosphere analysis well we cannot do that and seismic sensor we cannot do so well that's pretty much it what we can do from here and then let's do a maneuver node after which we will be circularizing here ish sort of low Lodun lodunian orbit and we could do pass by ike as well hmm i don't want just some crazy orbit that will throw me out i just want a decent pass by ike that sounds more like it fair enough you know when we're already there it wouldn't hurt us to get some signs from ike Okay, and let's now enjoy the show. Some of this will definitely be the picture for my... for the today's episode, for sure. Okay, and let's hit the time acceleration and marvel the beauty that Duna and Ike are. There we go. Beautiful screenshot. Hello, Duna. Oh, I can't wait till we get the rover on the surface of that planet and start driving like the madman I am. Alright, the note is in five minutes. Another screenshot. Yes, definitely worthy screenshot. Two minutes to burn and the total burn time will be 19 seconds good enough so when we are node in minus 10 then we'll start the burn somewhere about here first time engaging our lvns outside of kerbin sphere of influence i think so, yeah, just fixing the approach a little bit. We have to nail this one as close as possible. And I believe, yeah, we already have a decent one. Good. Let's do some science. Log pressure data, send it. Log temperature, send it. Observe the mystery goo send it and we cannot do much more right now can we we can get to ike at least so time warp and guys as we are not returning i think after we gather some decent data around ike i will probably be wrapping it up for this episode so yeah okay hold on now where am I? Do not, yes. All right. Let's get close to Ike, shall we? I'm just trying to find it on the night sky. Oh, there it is. Time accelerate a little bit and there you go. Okay, we are now officially in Ike's sphere of influence in 3, 2, oh, there we are. Which means we'll do a little bit of science and the screenshot, of course. Yes. Good. Now, temperature, send. 
pressure scan send and is there anything else that I could send no not really well that's a damn shame but in the, which case we will just gonna get out of the sphere of influence and then I shall be circularizing my orbit around Duna Time work complete, let's burn orbit retrograde and just ensure that we do have a nice almost circular orbit. Somewhere around 600 or something. Yeah, here we go. Alright guys, oh look at that view. Well, this is now really photogenic, isn't it? Amazing pictures, yes, I love it. Yeah, definitely. Alright. Let's just marvel a little bit what Duna is. But that also means, guys, as always, like if you like the episode, hit subscribe, and I will see you all the next one.